1932 Olympics, the gold medalist um, in the middleweight division was from Cleveland, Ohio. Ah, see, good, <laughs> that's good information to know, yeah. man. I, okay. Yeah, I know that because Uncle Tony um, was going up. He had Olympic trials and yeah. he had a, a headbutt that opened up a cut over his left eye. Okay. And um, it was a TKO. Ref stopped it, said, you know, this guy, I think is, uh, I misplaced his name, but anyway, he, he went and represented the U.S. Okay. in the Olympics and cool. won the gold medal. And that could have been Uncle Tony if it wasn't for that harsh Polish forehead that we all have. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to somebody about a forehead. Trust me, I get it. I got the forehead, kid. Trust me. The helmet, we call it. <laughs> it's all right? good. Yeah. As long as so it's Cleveland passed down. Represent? <laughs> representing cleveland in the building thank you guys for tuning in and, and, and keeping it cracking with us so what we're going to do is show you why does it matter that you have and understand the lineage of the olympics and what it brings and the levels that the olympic takes you and even if you don't quite make the olympics getting that repetition in the national tournaments and the regional tournaments and the golden gloves not everyone has the opportunity mm -hmm. to make it at a high level if you're not being in a camp in, in training camps or boxing gyms that really breed those type athletes. So I was privileged enough to have my passion turn into a reality. But trainers, I need to know who out there are trainers because I want to see you pop into the comment box everyone out there who's training if you're thinking about training this segment is for you we have the answers to the next steps and stages in your journey and it's very important that you understand when you are moving into the sport the beginning day is your first day that's a level up from your dream and what now will become your reality the responsibility is to do something very similar to what I'm doing. Do not corrupt the game. Do not do a disservice to the sport of boxing because Haley's uncles, the people that came aboard and operated in a such a manner to see us as gentlemen, statesmen, as one of the greatest fighters in his era, uh, Eubanks, always made it clear that we shouldn't even use language bad language that is because we are prime ministers and the heavyweight king and world champion athletes and athletes and trainers at large are statesmen because they are the prime minister of all men every man every fan looks at this game and the gladiators that reside within it and they respect them no matter what they say and banter as gentlemen as statesmen and so for that reason respect yourself as if you are a priest have respect for the game because when you get to this level i had the privilege and otis i'm bringing you back in in two seconds of a shake to we bred world champions on an entirely different level. Estrada, that's my uncle, Coach Anthony Bradley. And you see who's beside him. That was the 2004 Olympic and the Olympic team. And their level, Andre. and this is Coach Kenny Adam, who was his coach. And it passed down. That right there is what I gave back to him for all the decades 50 years in the game he gave i saw every single thing that he experienced in that gym the gym that went home with him wrote on a notepad a paper every night an entire program Flipped the page, filled it out. Every day, the next day, he knew exactly what he was gonna do. He did that over and over and over, and it was a complete, he never came in 
working on it. It was always done when he did it. And when I saw that, I watched him drink. I watched him move. I watched him talk to some of the guys that had the opportunity to be world champions. Some of the guys who had the opportunity to fight as amateurs and develop that muscle memory. And I saw the level of respect that they had for him. And I watched him breathe and I watched him look at me. Everything he did, I watched him and I said, I'm going to pay you back. And I'm going to live your leg your legacy on an entirely different level. Same way with Coach Adams. He picked up the phone every day. Coach Adams would be on the phone. I would hop on, send love. I said, these men have brought too much to the sport for me not to give back. And people wonder why I work my ass off so hard. But these guys, and, and you see this man, these men work so hard, you would not believe it. And I said, mm -hmm. with this will come something to, sh to show you. And that is my six week training camp book that I did. And I said, you won't have to write anymore. And that copy landed in his lap. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Aww. that was, and that thing had to go through. It's not paper on a thing. It had to be written out. It had to be edited. It had to go through editors. It had to go through print. It, had to, it took years for that to come to fruition. And to be able to put wow. that into his hands, you don't have to write no more. Just open the pages and turn them and turn them. See, that was one of the first things that I was able to get back. So coaches and trainers, you guys who are out there and you're looking at this sport as if you can just jump in. And there are a lot of these people. I got 184,000 people on this page alone who just think you can just jump into a gym and start boxing and trainers. You can just turn on YouTube and start doing it. But let me explain something to you. You are discrediting the game and you will get someone seriously hurt. Period, mm -hmm. point blank. So you must honor the sport. You must honor our game. You must honor the heritage. And you must understand that the people that came before you and me and my uncle and his coach and their teachers were predecessors. Do not stain the fabric of this sport for your own selfish purpose of wanting something that you will not accomplish if you don't do it the right way thank you for listening to that banter perfectly said yeah well it's very and important that we take it seriously go for it yeah and your uncle must be so proud of you and all that you're doing for the sport yeah i just started combing the surface so i mm -hmm. I, would, I just want to make the message clear I don't do it just for him. I do it for your your uncle. I do it for all of the people who did not understand the sacrifices they made. They could not make their own bed because they were losing their own beds because they were having to be at the gym and sacrifice for fighters and sacrifice your life because you have to sacrifice your life. So when you find someone in a sport of boxing that's willing to roll that dream out, you got to covet them because you will lose everything. And the ones that are phony, they will soon be gone. And those who are just on for your good times, when the bad times come, they will be gone. So you don't have to worry about that. So for that reason, you just understand the responsibility and the impact of acquiring gold medal. Look at Andre Ward. That was who was with my uncle in yeah. that ring, 2004 Olympics in Athens. Okay, I saw and experienced so much it was just like when you get back you can't even celebrate you just got to keep going and that's the sport you you lose it all if it, there are stipulations with people to be around you or be with you then you, there won't be for long because people can't take that the, the the sport is so taxing on you mentally my average day at the gym was 19 hours that's amazing. That's dedication. That's your whole day. Seven years ago, they say the 10,000 hour rule, you'll become an expert. Seven years ago, I calculated my hours. I was at 73,000 hours. Wow. What degree is that? That was seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, you so... You probably quadrupled or, I don't know, multiplied that by 10 now. You're not going to do it by watching YouTube, people. And that's my point. Do the game mm -hmm. service, all right? 